Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rum on the Couch, video number 54. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival. Uh, for this episode, I'm going to focus on a brand that I'm yet to try. Going to have it for the very first time today. Um, in my mind, I, I, I'm loving all the kind of new rums that are coming out at the moment. And I'm quite liking the fact that not every rum is spiced or flavoured. Um, I understand it's a very big part of the category at the moment, especially here in the UK. It's great that, you know, People are coming away from their you know, preferred category of, say, for example, gin or uh, or whiskey or vodka and moving on to rum and they're finding their, their sort of niche into it. Um, there's lots of brands out there, as you know, in regards to the, you know, the old school ones that have been around for decades, if not centuries, uh, you know, having their own distillery. But of course, the last couple of years have been a variety of brands, especially here in the UK, that have been sourcing rum from different parts of, say, Latin America or the Caribbean. Uh, and bringing them together to make something fantastic. And I see no problem with that at all. Um, but I, in my mind, I do love the fact that when they do something like this, they are transparent enough to tell us what's in it, why they're doing it, and of course, what makes it stand out to everything else that's available on the market. And that's what my Manchester Rum Festival is all about, is to show, show off these kind of brands uh, and have a good variety for all ages, all sorts of styles, and of course, all sort of personal experiences. I understand that people love their spice rums, fair enough. It's still, I feel, getting them onto the category of rum um, to appreciate what you know, molasses and sugarcane and the production and the history of the rum itself is all about. So with this, I was having a chat with Lee, who is the owner of this beautiful looking bottle. This is Lost Years. I've got two. I've got his Navy Strength Rum, and I picked up a bottle of his Four Island Rum as well. And what Lee is uh, telling me all about, because I was quite intrigued, not just because of his rum, but also the fact that he supports sea turtles. And that's the reason why it's called Lost Years. So every year, thousands of sea turtles uh, obviously born on the beaches and then they actually go into the sea and not seen for many years and because of that it's baffled people of obviously what happens obviously they're growing up I would imagine but it's nicknamed for lost years so every bottle I believe I'm just going to double check this I think it saves a hundred turtles uh, I knew I'd forget it that's why I put it up here <laughs> that was it it won't be seen up to a decade quite a long long time for this um Every bottle of Lost Years rum you buy saves up to 10 baby sea turtles. And the reason why? It supports the community-based conservation efforts at key nesting sites across the Caribbean and Latin America itself, which is where, ironically, the rums have been sourced. So he's, he's, sort, he's seen this sort of face-to-face. -face. He's understood that you can't just make a rum and not give back to the community, to the areas, that not just in the rum production element, but obviously the community in its own right, wherever it's uh, based from. So... I'm going to try the Four Island first because as much as I want to get my heads around the Navy strength straight away, I feel like I'm not going to appreciate the full flavours of its 40% ABV little brother. So, Lost Year's Four Island rum, hatched in the Caribbean. I'm liking that little uh, remark there. Let's get this off. And I'm loving the fact it's got a cork. However, the only downside is you can never get the wrapping off when you're doing a video. <laughs> I always try and make an effort to make it look like I've definitely never tried it before, but there's always that slight problem of performance issues. There we go. So, ooh, I can smell that already. That's a good sign. Got me a little Glen Cairn glass here, so let's pour some in. Now, I'm just going to refresh my memory. I've just got the uh, notes that Lee sent over. So this one has Barbados, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, and Guadeloupe. It's a little bit of sugarcane juice thrown in there as well. Um, the way he's put it here is the marriage of three fine rums tropically aged for up to eight years with a punch of authentic rum agricole and apparently it's going to taste truly epic. So let's uh, let's use that as a benchmark. Let's really, really see what we can get. And I have to admit, that's incredibly fresh. And I do get an agricole. I'm a huge fan of agricole, so I feel like I can pick up some of the more nuances that sugarcane juice can offer, but they come across in here for sure. Definitely some tropical fruits, some fresh banana. I kind of get it. There's a little bit of like dry spice in there. Maybe um, 
I wouldn't say cinnamon, I'd say probably a little bit more nutmeg. And there's something else in there. I want to say papaya, that real, I think it's more the defining fruit element. It's a good nose, it's a really good nose. I'm, a, I'm kind of going back to it. There's something new every time I go back, which is good. It's developing as it sort of breathes. All right, so 40% ABV, up to eight years, four different countries coming together. Let's give it a go. That's very easy to drink. I wouldn't say it's super smooth, it's still got a slight rawness towards it, but nothing that's gonna put you off straight away. Oh wow. There's a lot of different flavors. As it sort of develops over your tongue, over your palate, a lot of different flavors coming around, and definitely on the uh, side of your um, throat there as well. It's not overly sweet, which is good. It's definitely not been doctored at, at, at all. There's no added sugar in there. It's, it's got a sort of butterscotch element towards it, but quite a, quite a light, fragrant butterscotch. The grassy sugarcane notes from Guadalupe are coming through nicely. It's still very, very fresh. I'm getting a little bit of honey, but I'd say it's, it's got like the oiliness of honey. But in a way, it tastes like honey water. Has it got the thickness of it? And getting a little bit of um, a dryness comes through. I'd say like a mixed nut element. But it's a very long, kind of lingering profile. This would work amazing in a Mai Tai. It really would. And I'd probably say it would work really good as um, an aged daiquiri. You know, something that's... I mean, don't get me wrong, I feel like this neighbor's strength is going to make a hell of a good nuclear daiquiri, but I feel like the Four Islands is going to be offering a, a bit of a, a bit of an extra punch, you know, a slight more dryness to that daiquiri, but I would prefer, I've got a sweet tooth, as you, I'm sure you guys already know by now, but if I can appreciate the flavours and I can really get behind this one, a good daiquiri will work amazing with this. I'm liking it. It's not too bold. Which is good. It's not like it's it's powerful. It's not like it's going to blow you away. It's not going to. This is a good introduction, I'd say, actually, <clears throat> to a sipping rum that I feel is incredibly versatile. Probably wouldn't mix it too well, but definitely the cocktail. It could really have a good shine opportunity there. All right. So that is the Lost Years Four Island Rum. Let's give a go to a Navy Strength. Now I'm a huge fan of uh, cash strength, Navy Strength sort of profiles. Um, grew that up in the whiskey trade and um, it's carried on quite nicely over to rum. So when it comes to things like uh, Ray and Nephew to Den Ross from St. Lucia to Puss's Gunpowder, you know, it's, it's I love it, I really do. I, so the flavor profiles you pick up, um, they're not as heavily diluted as Obviously, other rums, or the vast majority of rums, and I'm talking because I can't get this open again. <laughs> Lee, I've got some feedback for you, pal. There we go. We're getting there. All right, so 54.5%. Uh, I'm just going to double check because this is only coffee column still rum from Jamaica, married with a high ester pot still rum from one of the most revered distilleries in Barbados. So they hasn't mentioned which distilleries they are, but I'm sure if you tried it or would like to try it, you can probably work out which distilleries they could be. So only two islands for this one. But it's, it's actually quite interesting that you've gone for a, a coffee column still from Jamaica, when traditionally you'd expect the pot still elements to come from there, uh, but he's then gone for the pot still in Barbados, and not go for the coffee uh, coffee column still, which again you'd expect. So he's swapped it round, which is good. Ooh, quite clean, which I kind of expect going off the four island one. There's a hint of marshmallow in here, light, fluffy sort of profile towards it, a little bit oily, but not. It's nothing too punchy, which is good. It's not going to put people off it hasn't got that kick and I'll, I'll reference Ray Nephew again because I know it puts a lot of people off but it smell it straight away it's got a real ethanol element towards it but this lacks it but it, it lacks it in a good way okay let's give it a go it's gonna wake me up in the morning uh, 
that's chewy. That's very chewy. And it's not, or it develops, granted, it definitely does develop. You get that sort of strength near the back of your throat now, but that's a very smooth way into a navy strength rum. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. That Barbadian, well, to be fair, that Jamaican, again, that's my own mind, presuming it's the way around. That Jamaican is really kind of softening it very, very nicely. It still has that marshmallow element I picked up on the nose, but wow, that's not what I expected at all. And that is a very good way of looking at it because this could be a really good way of getting people on board of Navy Strength without freaking them out with the high ester, high profile, robust elements of the likes of Ray and Nephew. I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. And that would work again. Yeah, daiquiri would be fantastic. It's a little bit dry at the end, so a daiquiri would work quite well. But I'm also thinking things like ting, you know, grapefruit soda. For that as a long serve, it's not too punchy enough that you need to add lots of ting to sort of bounce and dilute it out. But that's a beautiful, yeah, good three to one ratio of that. You've got yourself a beautiful uh, long serve drink there. It's completely, well, it says unaged. I'm just going to double check. Uh, yeah, completely unaged rum. So it does, uh, maybe for the purist, it does lack that kind of flavor profile you maybe expect from a young rum. <coughs> Excuse me. But from a versatility point of view, you can drink that on its own quite easily and not struggle. And you can actually do something with it, whether it's a long serve, whether it's a... Uh, uh, a cocktail itself, I mean, like I say, a nuclear daiquiri with that would be fantastic. I'm liking this. I'm liking both of them, to be fair. Really, really good. That's a good show. Well, this is a good thing. This is still my journey as well, but I'm liking to share with you all here. To try something new that's only been out for a handful of months now. Uh, I think, well, definitely less than a year, off memory. Uh, there are two other expressions. Let me just double check which ones they were. Um, he's also got... Silver Moon, which is a 40% young rum, and Arabica Cask Age at 42%. Um, so, I mean, I mean, now I've tried these two, I'm intrigued to try them two as well. So it's uh, looking like a pretty decent range of four rums there. Uh, and of course, I'm loving the fact it's, it has something to do in regards to bringing back money to the community in Latin America, in the Caribbean, to saving the turtles, to entwining it in. I mean, it's, it's got... A beautiful turtle motif on the late, uh, sorry, top of the court there as well. So it's uh, it's really integrated into the actual branding, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm always up for. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with brands who don't partner with anything like this, but uh, to me, it, it always offers that intrigueness, which is why I rang Lee to to sort of get a better understanding of what it's all about. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm hoping that gives you a bit of an idea what Lost Years Rum is all about. Feel free, check them out. Uh, they're on the social media. They're on uh, lostyearsrum.com. Uh, they also have an online shop. So if you are intrigued enough, please do uh, purchase a bottle or two. Let me know what you think in the comments as well. If you tried it already or intend to by picking a bottle up. Uh, hopefully these guys will be involved with Rumfest. Uh, not the current direction because, again, that would have been the last year's exhibitors for this year's festival very confusing <laughs> uh, but fingers crossed we'll be able to get involved and in coming up to manchester in 2022 uh, but i'm sure you can't wait till then so like i say check them out if you can feel free to pick a bottle up let me know in the comments what you guys think as well and uh fingers crossed i'll be able to experience the other two and maybe do a lost years part two as well other than that ladies and gentlemen enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your week and i will see you all on the other side Enjoy.